Hey there, how's it going? I've talked about the 8 Bits to Infinity community many times on this channel. They were the first online game jam community that I found that ran regular game jam events. After participating in many of them, I became a judge and even partnered up with them to host my first ever game jam, the Vim Jam, which thanks to them was a huge success. The 8 Bits jams have what is probably my favorite game jam format. There's a focus or restriction that's known ahead of time, and then a theme that's announced at the start of the jam, as you'd expect. I do think there's a larger discussion to be had here about game jam formats that I think would be really interesting. Game jams have become a hobby, and not just the occasional or annual thing to help spark ideas for a larger project. Seriously, look at the game jam page on itch. It's crazy. There are so many going on at any given time. So naturally, variations to the typical format are made to make them more appealing and interesting to participants. But again, that's a discussion for a later video, which I'm already in the process of writing. So let's get the old remember to subscribe and hit that bell out of the way if you'd like to see it in the future. So this focus plus theme format, which I like so much that I used it for my own jam, lets participants know ahead of time a large or small aspect of the game, allowing for some time to plan, learn, and test if it's something they've ever played around with before. This time around, the focus of the jam is physics. The goal is to make a game that in some way uses physics as a main mechanic. Most game engines have some ability to add physics to objects and then have them interact when the game is running. I'm really not the person to explain all this. Up until this point, I had never actually used the physics behavior in Construct 3. In all the games I've made up to this point, if I ever needed gravity, I've always used the less realistic but more controllable platform behavior. One of the fun aspects of this format, because I knew the focus ahead of time, I was able to spend a live stream just playing around with the physics behavior. Having never touched it before, it really was a brand new experience for me, and everyone made fun of me because of how excited I was by it all. <laughs> I know this is ridiculous. I'm sorry. Um, I'm having fun. <laughs> Seriously though, it was like the first time I made a box move on screen. It was just really fun to see. The more realistic and chaotic nature of how the objects were interacting with each other was opening up so many new game design ideas. We played around for a while with things like a Rube Goldberg machine and a Pachenko style game. During that stream, Chat and I got to talking about Twitch chat games that a lot of other streamers I know have been making. There are some really fun games and experiences being created that an entire stream can take part in together, just by typing a few things into chat. I've wanted to make one of these types of games for a while, but I haven't had the time or the drive to really look into it seriously. Basically, I don't want to learn JavaScript. While we were making the Pachenko style game on stream, I said it would be really cool if we could make it where someone could type in chat and it would drop a ball in game with their name attached to it. After the stream, I was contacted by one of my mods, MLK Dev, about a project they were working on in Construct that reads from Twitch chat. They offered to share the code with me for the jam, which I really appreciated and said yes to. The jam began on a Friday and ran through the following Sunday. The theme that was announced to go along with the focus is Switch. I sadly don't have a lot of time to spend on this jam because of other responsibilities, plus the fact that I'm a judge means that my game isn't eligible for voting anyway, so I was really just making this for fun and for myself. So my plan is, because this is something I've never done before, to just make something quick and light and to keep it within scope. I like the challenge of making something enjoyable as simply as I can. I got a bit too ambitious with my previous game jam game, and I didn't want to go through that again. So even though the jam started on Friday, I waited around until Monday to really get going because I figured I would start the whole thing live on stream. MLK Dev went above and beyond over the weekend though. They sent me a construct file that had the working basics of a Pachenko game, you could spawn balls and they would fall and bounce off objects, tied together with a Twitch chat integration. So if a viewer in the Twitch chat typed a command prompt, a ball with their name above it would drop and bounce down. I started by throwing together a really ugly block out of what I was thinking the game would look like. Not visually of course, just spatially. 10 spawn points across the top for the players to spawn their drop from. On the right I'm putting a scoreboard as well as an area where I can put my camera since this is meant to be a stream game. I added a bunch of bumpers and spinners for the balls to bounce around on, scoring spaces for when the balls hit them to add to the scoreboard, and a final switch that turns off the game, which ties into the theme. The idea is everybody's trying to be the one to trigger the switch to end the game. When the game ends, whoever has the highest score is the winner. You do get a bonus for flipping the switch. If you're not very familiar with Twitch, there's a few things to keep in mind while making a chat game. If you need viewers or players to type in chat to have something happen, then the more players you have, the more your chat will be filled up with what is called spam. This isn't the bad kind of spam, it's just an unfortunate byproduct of needing people to type commands to make something happen. I've seen many other devs try plenty of different solutions to keep the spamming in check, but I kind of wanted it. My plan is the game will only really be pulled out every so often, or it'll be great for things like when I have to take a restroom break. You know, spam is fine during those times. Twitch does, however, have an anti-spam filter built in where the average viewer cannot type the same message more than once every 30 seconds. From the other devs that I know that are making games in a similar vein, they usually just ignore any text past the initial command, so the player can just type something extra afterwards and have the command go through again. This still lets the game read the input, but avoids dealing with the spam filter. I decided to take a different approach with this. The reason there are 10 drop spaces is so that after you've dropped one, you're able to drop another one because it's a different message. So typing exclamation point drop one will drop a ball 
ball in the first slot. Typing exclamation point drop two will drop it in the second slot. Those are two separate messages and avoid the spam filter. Like I said, I'm embracing the command spam for the game, so it becomes a bit of a race as everyone in chat tries to type out a command for each number. I purposefully made it that you have to type out each one individually. And usually by the time you've dropped a ball out of each of the spawn points, it's been roughly 30 seconds, so you should be fine to go back and start over again. We added in the base mechanics and right away I got what I wanted. Chat filled with drop messages and it was really cool to see. I love these moments in game devs where there's something that I never thought I'd be able to do just all of a sudden happening. I had it the first time I made a box on screen, I got it while playing with the physics engine and prep for this game, and now to see people from all over the world type a message and have a game running on my computer react is just so freaking cool. I ended the stream really happy with how it was all working, except that I needed to figure out how the scoreboard worked and how to track and sort all the names. The winner is not the person that flips the final switch. They do get a bonus and do tend to end up being the winner, but the actual winner is the person who has the highest score, which is accumulated throughout the game until the switch is flipped. I started looking into setting up the scoreboard system on stream, but I realized it was just going to be a lot of me staring and thinking, which I don't like to do on stream as much because it's hard for me to actually focus on something and really get some good thought in live with people watching and me needing to talk and be entertaining. But my community is amazing, and Swift Illusion put together a proof of concept code for me to use to get the scoreboard up and running. This was a lifesaver for me because I was able to add in their scoreboard code into my current build without much hassle. Also, I want to take a second for a quick aside to mention that I did not change game engines. I'm still using Construct 3, I just bought a theme for it that makes it look different. For a long time now, I've been asked over and over again why I don't use the dark theme. And without getting too into it, I've never been a fan of the default Construct dark theme. I just don't like what it does to the layout. But I found this one called Pro CSS made by Mitsu Ashish, and I really, really dig it. It does look a lot like Godot's color scheme, so it does confuse some people. But just to be clear, I didn't change engines, this is still Construct 3, it just looks a little different. Okay, sorry for the aside, but hopefully that answers a bunch of questions that people were already planning to leave in the comments. Before the stream the next day, I added in a bunch of components, the scoreboard, a seesaw-like platform, as well as some breakable blocks that would take damage when the ball hits him, some pretty standard stuff. I tried it out with chat, and it all seemed to function pretty well. But now I have another problem. This is ugly as all get out. The placeholder random colored boxes have just got to go. I spent the stream getting the art started, trying to figure out the look and feel that I wanted, and tweaking the code where necessary. And then that whole process just continued over the weekend, where I finished everything up. All in all, this jam was pretty straightforward. Making the art for the elements took a little while, but overall it just wasn't too bad. This game isn't really character driven, but I'd still try to keep my normal bright and cartoony feel. I designed a few level layouts, I even added a special meme level just for my Twitch chat. Cleaned up the code a little bit more, and everything worked pretty much how I wanted it. But that's where I ran into the problem that ground the game jam aspirations to a halt. The part of the project that listens to a Twitch channel is set up in a script in the project. This is all stuff that MLK sent me, and I don't fully understand how it all works because I'm not that familiar with JavaScript, especially using Construct Event System with JavaScript. My inexperience in this realm really hit hard here, and the most I could understand was that the script that pulls the channel name happens on Project Launch, and that's where I kind of got stuck. My hope was that I could make this game where you would just type in your Twitch chat and be good to go and it would link up and you don't have to worry about anything. But the way everything was running right now, my channel was pretty much hard-coded in and there was nothing else I could do about it. I seriously spent hours trying to figure this out of how to change the channel and point to a different one and I just, I couldn't. And then the deadline came and went without me being able to submit the game because nobody would want to just play a game that only worked in my Twitch chat, so it just didn't seem worth submitting. But ultimately, the game came out well, it works, and that's all I really wanted. We played it on my stream, it was an utter blast, and it did exactly what it was designed to do. Allow for a few minutes of chaos and viewer interaction on the stream. And now, it's been over a month since I quote-unquote finished the jam. I mean, I finished the game, I failed the jam. So I'm sitting here with a finished and playable game, but again, I couldn't submit it because no one really wants to play it when they can only use my Twitch chat. In the following weeks, we played the game a good amount of times and still play it occasionally today on the stream. I find interactions decrease if the game is played too often or for too long. It asks the viewers to type in a lot, which is a high level of interaction to ask for from Twitch viewers. So now I pull it out every so often on the stream, and it works perfectly there. I set out to make a game that 50 to 100 Twitch viewers could all play at once. Because of the number of people and Twitch latency, I tried to make a game that was very straightforward and easy to play. For a first foray into the realm of Twitch viewer interaction games, I had a lot of fun. My planful is to have a handful of these types of games available to pull out every so often when I feel like it. I currently have a few ideas kicking around, but nothing I'm ready to start on just yet. But having this game that just works for me is something I'm just not satisfied with. For weeks, I tried to figure out how to make it so you could change the channel that the game is pointing to without having to open up the construct file and change it in the code. I was writing this script and I hit the point where I had to say, and I still don't know how to do it, and no one else can play this sadly. But I didn't like that, so I dug in one last time. 
I finally got lucky with a Google search and found a tutorial by Fuzel CC that wasn't even about anything I needed. But one of the things they did show in there was how to call a JavaScript function from an event sheet. And this is exactly what I was looking for. Thanks, Fuzel CC. I've watched more of their tutorials, and if you use Construct, they're really worth checking out. Far too few subscribers. That was seriously the final piece of the puzzle. The game now runs in browser on my itch page. All you have to do to run the game is type in the name of the Twitch channel you want to play on, and then in the chat on that channel, just start typing the commands. The game doesn't save score or anything else, so there's really nothing to download or authorize. It's just meant to be a fun couple of minutes for the streamer and their Twitch chat, and for me, it does that nicely. The link to the game is below if you'd like to try it out for yourself with your Twitch chat. Thank you all very much for watching. I would like to give an extra special shout out to my amazing patrons. Abby Sean, Daniel Martin, David Scott, Huntrum, Nightfall, Kevin Haugau, Cormai, Liam Sorta, MLK, Matsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, and Straight Up Gruntled. You're all awesome people, and I truly can't thank you enough for the support. If you want to be part of the game making process, come say hi at twitch.tv slash vimlar. Or you can message me on Twitter or join the Discord. I hope you're all healthy and safe wherever you are. I'll talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.